right, I'm gonna try this again. I started this video once already and I'm doing it live here on Facebook and so sometimes Facebook doesn't like me so much and sometimes Facebook doesn't like my internet either. So I'm gonna try this again. But, um, so I've been doing videos these past few days and we've talked about a, a few different things. We've talked about, I've given you permission to not be perfect. I've given you permission to protect your time. If you read my emails and you're on my email list, um, I shared with you, I gave you permission to say no. Um, I gave you permission to prioritize yourself, right? Sometimes we need that. And today we're talking about something that is um, something I learned. I was very reluctant to learn this lesson, which is why I think it's an important one to share. And it's one that I'm excited to share for that reason. And then I'm going to talk about permission to plan. So the old me would say, why would I take the time to plan? So back when I had three kids, um, I had three kids in three and a half years, and my life was just utter chaos all the time. There was no plan, there was no structure, it was literally just survival mode, trying to survive and keep the little people in my life alive, right? That's what it was every day. And every day was relatively the same, every day was frustrating, every day I went to bed feeling frustrated, and what am I doing this all for, and exhausted that I have to get up tomorrow and do the same thing. So that, that was what my life was. And then I decided, well, Okay, it's kind of in chaos as it is. You know, I might as well at least try something. I might as well try something to make it better. So I started with um, deciding to get up earlier every morning. And it wasn't that easy, but the surprising thing was I found that after five days to a week, it really did get much, much easier. And the reason is become, because I came to value what getting up earlier did for me, right? It allowed me to set the tone for my day. It, is, it allowed me to approach the day on my terms. It allowed me to start the day before my kids got up. Um, it just kind of allowed me to start my morning the way that I wanted to, rather than <laughs> getting out of bed and trying to put out fires the minute I got out, right? I don't know if you can relate to that at all. If you're someone who has a lot of different roles, a lot of different responsibilities, a lot of different things to do, constantly having things that always having more, always feeling like you've got more to do than you can ever possibly get done. That's how I was feeling. So if, if that describes you at all, well, that was pretty much me too. So I started with getting up earlier. Then I started with creating a morning routine. And what that meant was I just wanted to be able to do the same things every day when I got up. And it was a 20 to 30 minute, you know, process. And it just, it anchored my day. And, I, and it really proved to be something super valuable. So that's kind of how my journey to um, becoming more structural and coming to appreciate and really thrive with structure. That's how it started for me. I came, I came to a place of just complete and utter chaos, really. And um, now I'm to where I say I have controlled chaos in my life. And the reason it's controlled chaos is because of what we're talking about today, which is permission to plan. So the old me would say, why would I take the time to plan? Because nothing ever goes according to plan anyway. So then if I create a plan, right? If I create a plan for my day and the plan goes haywire, then not only have I wasted the time planning, but I'm also frustrated that I that nothing went according to plan. And that's that is frustrating, right? So that's how I spent that's that's where I was like, why, why bother to plan? But Again, I started to make progress moving forward and creating a daily schedule was just one of those things and planning out some other things, planning out my week, planning out my month, planning things like when I was going to clean, what and how that would look like, how keeping a home would look. Then I started to get to the ages of kids where uh, we homeschool our kids. So I started to kind of have to come up with a structure for the day that incorporated that into it. And, you know, all of the other things that I had to juggle, I, I started to actually create a plan for all of it. And what I realized is, I think the same thing that I think all of us kind of realize if, if we've never really, if we've kind of flown by the seat of our pants or reacted, went through our days reactively rather than proactively with a plan is, I realized that, and here's the important piece, that when you have a plan, you have a structure. And that structure makes it easy for you, easier. If you don't have that structure, it's nearly impossible for you to get derailed and come back on track. If you don't have a structure, you're going to waste more time flailing around with your day or your week or your home schedule of how you're gonna care for your home or whatever it might be. You're, when you have to think through that all the time and it's a constant and ongoing process, something as simple as a meal plan, right? When you don't have a meal plan, you have to sit and figure out what's for dinner. <laughs> much different, it's much different than if you take the time to meal plan, for instance, on the weekend. Then you think about it on the weekend, and then you don't have to think about the planning part again. It's just the execution part, right? So I feel like it's important to understand that even though 
your plan never goes according to plan. It never follows exactly the plan. Life just never does. The fact that you have the skeleton structure there makes it so much easier to get through the day because you have that to come back to. Because you have those different pieces of your day or your week or whatever to look forward to. When you're frustrated by the amount of dust that you have in your bedroom and you, you can say, you know what, but I'm scheduled to clean the bedroom on Saturday. So it's gonna get better on Saturday. The, it's like an anchor. Your, you, any plans you come up with are, is like an anchor point that helps keep you stable because life has a way of thrusting us all around and making us feel unstable. Every day of my life is completely, nothing about it is the same from day to day. And so when you have a structure and you have a plan, including like a daily plan, a morning plan, when, a morning routine, when you have a plan for what time you're going to get up in the day and what time you're going to go to bed every day, when you have all of those basic plans and those basic structures. And here's the important thing, though. When you have these things, you go into it. Hi, Amy. Good to see you. You go into it knowing that it's not going to follow this completely. However, this is my anchor point. This is my starting point. This is where I'm starting. And it will help anchor me for when I get off plan, for when I get off the structure, for when your iPhone dies in a period of two hours having done nothing to it, and the next two days are spent with seven hours at the Apple store. That just happened to me, right? My days, two, I had about seven to eight hours divided between two days where I was dealing with the fact of trying to get my old phone fixed. I completely stumped the entire store at Apple, including the store manager. Nobody could figure out what happened to my phone. They could see that there was no damage. All that aside, I still had seven to eight hours by the time I was driving back and forth to places. I had seven to eight hours of time unplanned. That was unplanned. That was an unplanned thing. But I still had my plan so that when I came home after doing those things, I could at least come back to the one thing I had planned that day and make sure that that one thing got done because that's how I plan my days. I plan my days with one thing and that's the one thing that's gonna be my focus and anything beyond that, the other things that I have planned that aren't my one thing, those are just bonuses when I get those done. So that's where having a basic plan so much helps. It is so much less frustrating when I came home from the Apple store, having wasted eight hours, seven hours of my life dealing with this, paying for a new phone that I didn't, I wasn't thrilled about paying for, right? I was not happy. But at least I came home and I could bring myself back and say, okay, I'm not going to have this entire day be a frustrating mess for me. It's not all gonna be this way. I'm gonna reel it back in and I'm gonna focus on what I was planning. And when you have that basic structure of a plan, that's what it will do for you too. And that's where I give you permission to plan. And I think sometimes that's helpful because if you have the experience of planning and had it not go, go according to plan, like that's what I wanna give you permission for. It's I'm giving you permission to plan knowing that it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to follow. Your day is probably not going to follow everything on that plan. There are going to be things that come up that are not on the plan. There always seem to be. Something will somehow be different. But the, the fact of the matter is that you've still got that basic structure. So you're still, when I went to bed that night after having spent two days at Apple, basically, two entire days of, at Apple, it felt like anyway, I was able to look back at my day. I was still able to look back and see that I did get the things done that I decided were most important to, to be done. Instead of ending my day frustrated at all the time I spent at Apple, I wasn't really thinking about that so much as I was thinking about the fact that, wow, I at least got this done. My goal was to mop, uh, sweep and mop my main floor. And that got done. That got done that day, even though I still had to waste all that time at Apple. And so I went to bed feeling accomplished rather than feeling frustrated. And that's what a plan can do for you too. That's why it's important to plan. So today is the last day that my introductory pricing on my home CEO life planner is on sale. And in it are all kinds of things like, like what I've been talking about. Remember how I told you that my one, my, the one thing I wanted to get done that day um, still got done? I don't think I have that in here to show you, but that's part of my daily task mapping. Um, that's my daily task mapping worksheet that I do that with.
But I do have, so like in the planner, there's a waking time worksheet. Like there's actually a right time to get up. Like most people don't think about that. If your days aren't, you have to look at what you want to get done in the morning and what you need to get done and what you have to get done in the morning to know what time to get up. Like you have to take all of that into account. And if your mornings are kind of a train wreck, it's probably because you're not thinking backwards and planning backwards. You have to kind of plan backwards and say, this is what the end goal needs to be. Now, where's my starting point? And that's what the waking time is for you. Some get up earlier tips, right? A lot of people struggle with mornings. I hear it all the time. When I ask my readers, what, what's one of the things that you wish you could change or what's one of your biggest struggles? And a lot of people say, I'm just not able to get up earlier. I just, I struggle with mornings and a lot of people do, but here are some tips to help you with that. Oh, I talked about a morning routine. This is, this is, again, one of the first things I talked about. I think it was the first video I did last week where I talked about permission to not be perfect. Like this is called the perfect morning routine, but kind of like a schedule, you have to start with what the ideal is. You have to start with what your ideal is so that you can come back to that and you can say, this is what I'm going for and you can get part of it done then. If you didn't actually create, what do I really want this to look like? If you didn't actually come up with that for your morning, like your morning probably wouldn't be nearly as accomplished. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't feel nearly as fulfilling because, because you didn't know really what you were doing. And so having a routine, everybody kind of thrives with routines. If you've ever been a parent, you probably know how much kids thrive with routines and really we're kind of all the same. So there's a morning routine worksheet in there and a blank one if you don't like my suggestions. Here's a schedule. There's one for stay at home moms. There's one for not uh, working moms, no moms, right? If you just are at home and you don't have kids at home, time block ideas. Do you guys ever work with time blocks? There's such a there's such an eye-opening thing if you've never done that. And the most eye-opening thing for most people, like they say, what's a time block? The most important thing to know about a time block is that it has a beginning and an end. So many times people just think about the beginning and they don't think about the end and they don't create an ending point. And so if you're not able to accomplish, like in my life, I can hardly ever accomplish a task from start to finish. Like I can't, I've got to go drive this kid here or there. I've got to make a meal. I've got, you know, this kid to deal with who, you know, I got to put out this fire or that fire, right? But when I have a time block that I'm working in, um, because I don't have a lot of time to focus on one concentrated thing, I can break it down into bite-sized pieces and I can say, you know what, I'm going to work on organizing my storage room. That's my thing for eight, for August. That's my one big project. And so I... I would need two days to completely organize my storage room. Well, that's not happening. <laughs> so I can still, though, my commitment is I'm going to work on it for 20 minutes every day. And I have to put in more time than just that, too. But every day I put in 20 minutes. That's my time block. Instead of me going and working in my, here's the mind shift, right? If I say I'm going to go work in my storage room and I go down there and I can't get more than about 20 minutes of time to work on it in any given time, there's always something else that I have to do. So if I go down there and I don't work in a time block, right, I'm not coming at it with the time block idea in my mind, and I just go down and I work in my storage room, and then something happens and I get about 20 minutes of work in, but something interrupted me, where now I'm realizing, oh, I gotta go start dinner, oh, this kid, there's kids fighting upstairs I gotta go deal with, I forgot I gotta drive my daughter to practice, whatever it is, now I've put in that, same, I put in that 20 minutes of time and now I'm frustrated. Because now i got to walk towards the task and I didn't finish. And it's frustrating when you walk away from a task that's unfinished. Now, contrast that with the fact that you can work in a time block. And what a time block says is, I'm going to go work on my storage room for 20 minutes. So I go down there. I know that I only have 20 minutes. I'm more motivated because I know I only have 20 minutes. And I'm going to make that 20 minutes count. I'm not going to waste my time. But the end of that 20 minutes is up and I've worked hard during that 20 minutes because I'm super focused because I know I only have 20 minutes and that 20 minutes is up. And I say to myself, okay, I'm done with the storage room today. Now I'm going to move on to the next thing that I'm doing. But instead of feeling frustrated because I didn't get it done, I feel accomplished because I did get it done. I got done exactly what I said I was going to do, which is I'm going to work on my time. I'm going to work on my storage room for 20 minutes. And I did it. It's a totally different feeling. Imagine what that feels like, right? It's, it's a feeling difference. I'm trying to help people have better days. I'm trying to help people feel accomplished and content at the end of the day. When they look back on their day, instead of feeling like, oh, what failure, right? Like, I, this is my wrong, and it's whatever, right? I don't want that for people. I want people to be able to say, you know what? It, it was a good day. I got this and this and, you know, I got to spend this time with my kids, and because I planned my day well, I had, you know, 
30 extra minutes to sit and read a book with the kid and whatever, whatever it might be, right? And I planned in 30 minutes to read books with the kids because if you don't make intentional time to do stuff like that, there's always something that's more demanding, right? And then you get to the end of the day and you say, oh my gosh, I didn't even spend any time with my kids today because I was spent dealing with this, you know, cat puke in the bedroom and then I had my dinner burned on the oven and then something spilled all over in the refrigerator and, you know, I mean, that's what my life looks like. I imagine it's kind of similar to what yours probably looks like. And so, um, but how you approach it and the fact that you have a plan um, and that you have a plan in a lot of different ways, including time blocks and routines and schedules and daily task mapping. So you're getting the important things done and you're not worrying about the things that aren't important at least for today, right? All you're saying when you create one task that you're gonna do, all you're saying is, this is what's important to me today. These other things can be important to me another day. And that's not to say that you're not gonna do them. You're just saying, this is my one task that I'm most focused on today. And then anything else that I get done is just a bonus. Here's another one. Ooh, this one's um, brand new. I just got this one back today. This one, um, my, I have a designer who creates these and she, there was a typo on this one, so I haven't had it. I just picked this one up. How to get more done every day. Like who doesn't want that, right? Oh, I was gonna show you this task mapping one so that you know what I'm talking about. Um, but there's a lot in this planner. Today's the last day that you can get it for 50% off because I want it to be um, something that everybody has because it's super, um, Daily task mapping. There it is. So you start with your, I was working on mine. So you start with your um, task options. These are the things I'd like to do. Then you go down to narrowing that down to four and then you pick your one from there. And then you've got all of these tasks listed out and you've kind of got them prioritized. You've got your one most important thing. Then these other three things are the next priority. And then these are the things that I would like to get done. And then, you know, the next day when you go to fill out your task mapping worksheet, it's, you can kind of transfer from one to the other to the other. And it just, it makes it easier. Once you start kind of planning your day too, you'll find that it's easier to plan the subsequent days because stuff just kind of gets shifted around. So, so today's the last day though that you can get it for 50% off. There's three different um, package options depending on um, the first option is just the binder itself. And then we've got a deluxe option and that includes a 90 minute power planning class where we are going, I'm going to be talking you through how to fill each one of these sheets out, and we're actually going to take the time to fill them. And then the um, plat, so that's the deluxe option and then the platinum option is oh and then the deluxe option also has my time management sheets which are pretty awesome and they're right here um, i'm gonna try to find you a blank one um, the time management sheets help you um task your or write out your weekly tasks track your time helps you log your hours every day and then there's a section to um itemize or write your daily tasks right so this is what i'm gonna do today this is what i'm gonna do tomorrow kind of a thing and i don't i usually just make it every day um, i don't like to plan too far ahead on the daily stuff, and then it's an itemized task list too, where you can take each task. Most of the things we do have several different steps. And that's another thing when you don't have a lot of time to do things from start to finish, like you have to be able to pick it up and put it back down and pick it up and put it back down. So that lets you do that. So that comes with the deluxe option, and then the platinum option has the binder, the timesheets, power planning session, and then a one on one 30 minute consult with me where we can work through whatever your struggles are with this stuff. So Today's your last day to get it at 50% off though, all those packages, and I will put a link up here with the video. Um, but today, just know that you have permission to plan. And that means you have permission to create a plan knowing that it's not gonna necessarily go that way, but it at least is beneficial because it's the grounding, it's the anchoring, it's the structure that's going to, every, everything else is going, you're always gonna keep coming back to that structure and that foundation. And that's gonna be a huge benefit over just flying by the seat of your pants all the time because I did that for a few years too and that was not a fun time. So that that's what you have today, permission to plan. So if you have any questions, you can let me know. Otherwise, make sure you grab your planner for 50% off today. Otherwise, you'll be paying more for it later, which that's kind of silly. All right, you guys, I'll see you later.